we'll look now at compensatory mechanisms to regulate pH in the blood. And I'm going to organize them by how quickly they tend to work. I'm going to start with long-term. So long-term regulation of blood pH, and when I say long-term, I mean over hours to days, is primarily controlled by the kidneys. They are a powerhouse of pH control. And that's because they can secrete excess hydrogen as needed. They can also reabsorb hydrogen as needed. So look at that. If the blood is a little bit too alkaline, then they can reabsorb more hydrogen back into the blood and not pee it out. If the blood is a little bit too Acid, uh, acidic, then the kidneys can secrete excess hydrogen into the nephron tubules and pee out more hydrogen. And in so doing, they can really do a great job of managing blood pH. That's not even all they can do. So they can modify hydrogen. They can do the same thing with bicarbonate. Sometimes you'll hear me say um, that an organ has a gas pedal and a brake pedal. Well, the kidneys in this case have two gas pedals and two brake pedals because they can modify um, hydrogen and they can modify bicarbonate by either taking more of it out of the blood or putting more in the blood. So they are just fantastic regulators of blood pH. As soon as someone start to have, starts to have kidney problems, then they could potentially start to see problems with their blood pH. Okay, now I'm going to use another color, a green, to look at um, a mid-term kind of controller of blood pH. This works, you know, minute to minute. And maybe you already guessed it, but this would be the lungs. The lungs, um, of course, are able to uh, either uh, blow off CO2, and as we ta have talked about, and hopefully you get by now, carbon dioxide makes the blood acidic, and so the more carbon dioxide we blow off, the less acidic our blood will be. And, um, or the the lungs, as needed, can retain CO2. You usually hear this in a, a bad um, sense of uh, with a disease, if someone's a CO2 retainer. All I mean here is, let's say someone's hyperventilating and they put the paper bag on their mouth. Basically, instead of, they're rebreathing their own carbon dioxide so that their blood then um, can become pH balanced. They also, the lungs, can um, actually get rid of some acetic acid by breathing out. So these are regulated by um, breathing rate and also the depth As soon as someone's lungs stop working as well as they should, then the patient can have issues with um, acidosis. Okay, so now we'll look at the quickest controller and regulator of blood pH. And I'm going to use yet another color. This time I'll use pink. And this works within seconds. And these are the buffers. So all the time the buffers are chemicals in your blood that are balancing the pH. 
and they do a great job of it. And then the lungs can uh, get rid of excess acid, the kidneys can get rid of excess acid to help your, your pH remain balanced. So buffers are chemicals that bind up hydrogen. Actually, instead of putting that, I think I'll just put bind up hydrogen or drop it into blood to adjust the acidity. If a hydrogen ion is bound to another pro bound to a protein or a molecule, it is no longer going to make the blood acidic. So it's sort of like taking a little kid that's running around getting into trouble and you hold them close. The buffer will take the hydrogen ion and hold it close and it no longer makes the blood acidic. But if the blood is alkaline, then the buffer will say, okay, little hydrogen ion, go run and play, and then let go of it. And then when it's free in the blood, it will make the blood more acidic, which in that case it would be necessary. Now I'm going to give you a couple buffer examples. I'm just going to give you two. So two buffer examples. One of those I find fascinating is protein. And I would hopefully hoped that you would think, oh my goodness, protein is everywhere in the body. That's great. And I'm going to focus especially on um, hemoglobin. Because where is hemoglobin found? In red blood cells. So it's perfectly positioned to adjust pH. And here's how. When you were in general biology, you learned about the structure of amino acids. So amino acids, you hear that amino? always have a nitrogen or an, an amine group on one end. And it looks like this. I'm going to leave that actually we'll say NH2 and then they're always, so this would be the amine group, and then there's a carbon center, and then they have a carboxyl group. Maybe I'll put, I'll go like this, so NH3+, plus, carbon. All amino acids have this. And then also they have uh, what's called the R group, makes them unique from one another. The R stands for residue, and it, it just is the part of the amino acid that makes them all different, because there are 20 different ones. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Let's use another color. How about an orange? No, black. Let's use black. If um, the blood was too alkaline, this can actually drop off hydrogen to become NH2. And it still is an amino acid, it's still part of a protein, but it can do this. And then if the blood were um, acidic, it could grab that hydrogen and hold it close so it no longer affects blood pH. And so these would be reversible equations. It can either drop off a hydrogen or grab a hydrogen close. If that's not enough, to make protein a great buffer, look at its other end. It can do the same thing on its other end. A COO minus means that if, if the blood is acidic, it can grab a hydrogen and it can hold that hydrogen close so it no longer makes the blood acidic, or it could go the other way around too and drop off.
And then to go back to this side, and I don't know that I explained it really well. So if the blood is alkaline, then it can drop the amine group can drop off a hydrogen. And if the blood is acidic, it can grab a hydrogen and hold it close. And when it takes it out of commission then or out of circulation, now it's not going to make the blood acidic. So we've got gas pedal and brake pedals on both ends of every single protein in your body. And hemoglobin is in the perfect position to adjust pH. You have about 250 million hemoglobin in every red blood cell. So this is an awesome, awesome buffer. And then we should do this too, just so you can see what that would look like. So that would be, but it's still an amino acid. It's still part of the protein. It doesn't affect, um, you know, that the protein is able to do its function. It's just able to change blood acidity. So this, in my opinion, is one of the most fantastic, awesome buffers ever. Okay, now I'm gonna show you one other buffer system. This one is the carbonic acid, oops. Bicarbonate system. Okay, now this one uh, has to do with, I was telling you that carbon dioxide usually combines with water when it is in the blood. So in the blood, carbon dioxide will mix together with water in the plasma, and they'll form a weak acid called bicarbonate. But because it's a weak acid, it doesn't just go right away to this or right away to that. It actually can even take another form. So you'll find all three of this. You'll find carbon dioxide in the blood. You'll find water in the blood. You'll find carbonic acid in the blood. You'll find hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. And then it's just a matter of their ratios as to whether um, the acidity is affected or not. So when you are doing a lot of metabolism, you make a lot of carbon dioxide. And then a lot of that carbon dioxide mixes with water to make carbonic acid, some of which dissociates into the hydrogen ions that are um, going to make the blood acidic. So um, breathing rapidly removes carbon dioxide from the system and that will raise blood pH breathing impaired retains we'll put it like this retains carbon dioxide which decreases pH.